Welcome to the Story of Art, a podcast where we will talk about different paintings. I am Matilda Hopeman and I will be leading the show. Today we will be looking at Manuel Osorio Manrique de Zuniga by Goya. Now I am pleased to introduce our special guest, Dr. Hansel, who is an art historian. Hello, Dr. Hansel. Hello, Matilda. What a great pleasure it is to be on your show today. I'm very much looking forward to sharing um, what I know about this painting with you. Thank you. I have heard that you know a lot about this painting. Well, I know something about this painting, but lots of very famous historians have written about it too, because it's one of Goya's most um, well-loved and um, well-known paintings. He is, um, as you've already said his name very, very carefully, um, I will raise you the fact that his father's got an even more complicated name. So Goya was commissioned to paint this in 1787 by the sitter's father, Vincente Joaquim Osorio de Moscoso y Guzman, who was a leading um, Spanish noble. And Goya painted it um, with oil on canvas, which means that the colours that he chose, the pigments, were crushed up and mixed with oil to create paints, which um, is not quite how we think of paints in little tubes today. Obviously, they didn't have that. And then he painted it on linen stretched over a wooden frame to create his canvas. So that's um, so far the beginning of what I know about this painting. That's very interesting. Do you know why it was painted? Do I know why it was painted? Well, that's a very complicated question. Sometimes it's very obvious when things were painted, if they were religious things that were to be um, used in acts of devotion in churches. But portraits, to me, are often the most exciting and fascinating works of art because they didn't have um, photographs, they didn't have cameras in those days. So portraits were often a way of commemorating or remembering someone. So I think that um, Vicente commissioned this painting of one of his children um, as a way of remembering him, which is particularly interesting because, very sadly, um, the little boy died. He's about three or four in this painting, but he died when he was about eight. I didn't know that. I'm really curious to find more about Goy's life. Can you tell us a bit more about Goy's life, please? I can certainly try. He lived quite a long life, um, and his father was a gilder, so his father was in charge of putting gold on paintings. Um, and he tried, Goya tried a couple of times to get into art school, but was not successful. Eventually he was, and he um, became a painter at the royal court, and he was involved in the quite turbulent politics of the time between France and Spain. But he was such a good painter that those were sort of overlooked, and he was allowed to carry on painting at the Spanish court. Do you think this painting might have anything to do with Goya's life? Well, that's a really interesting question. I think you can't help but look at any painting and wonder what the artist might have been doing at the time. Um, I think with this painting, though, I think that um, Goya Goya lived such a long time and he had quite a difficult time in his life. Towards the end of his life, he became very depressed and very paranoid and his style changes quite a lot. But at this point in his life, I think what would be interesting is for us to think about what the little animals mean, um, because the animals in the painting are particularly important. So you've got a little boy in red, um, and he's holding what appears to be um, his pet magpie. And you've got three cats in the background who've got very, very wide eyes, and they appear to be sort of looking at the magpie. And I imagine, if you know about cats, they're probably thinking about trying to sort of capture the magpie. Um, The magpie also holds a little card in his beak with Goya's signature on it. And it's very possible that Goya intended the animals to be a reminder of um, the sort of child's world, so what separates the child's world from the forces of evil, the cats are representing that, or as um, a commentary on the nature of youth and innocence, because obviously the little boy is very innocent and young. Um, And so there's a possibility that actually the finches in the cage um, and the cats sort of wanting to capture those birds is something to do with that idea. Wow. Well, I've certainly learned a lot today. Thank you, Dr Hansel. That was really interesting. Now, to finish off, I will read a story based on the painting that I have written. Thank you so much, Matilda, for having me as a guest on your show. 
I've really, really enjoyed discussing this with you. I'm very excited to hear your story. The boy shuffled closer as three cats watched intently at his red slippered feet. The three pairs of luminescent green eyes followed every move. A thick darkness blanketed them, all but the three pairs of eyes. The child was a future king of Spain, Prince Frederico. He was only three years old, and he hobbled a bit uneasily on his plump legs. Behind him strutted a crow, which Prince Frederick, who pulled on a piece of string, looped round the bird's neck. His florid complexion echoed his red trousers, and he had a bit of food encrusted in his silk shirt. As the crow moved, ripples of light fell on it, and you could see a spectrum of colour on his iridescent feathers. Suddenly, a cat flew forward and leapt on the bird. There was a scuffle and a flurry of feathers, with a slight squawk or a mew sometimes. Finally, all that was left was a few black feathers littered around the floor. Guiltily, the killer ran its tongue around its blood-stained jaws and slipped away, back to the shadows. The boy just watched. Like the cats, he just stepped back and let the darkness engulf them. Art is very relevant to stories, because art leaves a lot to your imagination. Humans think in stories, we even dream in stories. Well, that is the end of this story, and thank you for listening today. Remember to watch out for the second episode in this series the next week. Discover what painting we will do next, and with another special guest. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.